sweet traveler, welcome and enjoy your stay. Well, well, hard to believe it's already time again. It doesn't really feel like it's been ten years since the last sacrifice. Or, wait. Now that I'm thinking about it, I'm sure it hasn't. What year is it? Huh. So you're doing it early. Not that it really matters to me. I'll usually come any time the signal fire is lit. So what's the occasion? Oh, right. The, uh, the famine. So I guess this is about uh, putting an end to all that, right? Well, I suppose I can't complain. You look like you'll do very nicely as a sacrifice. Oh, what's with that face? You're so frightened. You know, if you weren't all tied up, I think you'd run away from me, wouldn't you? <laughs> uh, that's cute. Though I suppose I do strike an imposing figure. I'm, let's see, how many times bigger than you am I, do you suppose? Ten, twenty, thirty. Well, in the end, it doesn't even matter. You're not going anywhere. You're all mine now. Although... I'm curious why you were chosen. I heard that people usually consider becoming a sacrifice to be a great honor. Why are you so unwilling? Hmm. Well, how unlucky for you. It's a nice change of pace for me, though. I always thought it was funny that the sacrifices didn't feel like they were sacrificing much. You know what I mean? <laughs> you got me there. You can't sacrifice much more than your whole life. Especially when it's all for nothing. Oh. I guess I let that slip. Well, you were going to find out sooner or later. There's nobody around, so I'll let you in on a little secret. You see, my little sacrifice, I'm not the guardian spirit your people think I am. I am in no way responsible for famines, or the weather, or anything else. You all made that all up on your own. No, I'm from a very far off land. There are many creatures who look like me there. I do know some magic, but... I don't really use it for the benefit of your kind. I suppose I could grant better harvests and prevent natural disasters, but there's not really anything in it for me. You provide sacrifices for me even though I don't do anything in exchange. You see, I spent a lot of my life wandering before I ended up here. I had always planned on staying here only a short while before I got moving again. But then I saw you humans. 
You caught my curiosity and I stayed a little while longer to learn more about you. It was lucky for me that I did. After I'd been here long enough for the humans to know about me, there was a sudden violent earthquake and the locals jumped to the conclusion that I was somehow responsible. You humans are funny things. You'll offer up one of your own in a heartbeat if you think it'll save the rest. A human came to me, begging to take them in return for turning away my anger. Now, how could I turn down an offer like that? <laughs> That bothers you, doesn't it? You were tied up and left for me, and it doesn't even do any good. Except for me, of course. Oh, how cute. You know, that's what made me want to accept all these sacrifices. You humans are all absolutely adorable. It's a strange kind of cuteness, I'll admit. Not in the same way as a child or an animal. Something different. Don't know quite how to describe it, but it's appealing to me. It's especially precious when you cry like that. That's half the reason I've let you humans think that I eat the sacrifices. Even the proud and willing ones get a little teary-eyed when they think they're a blink away from going down my gullet. Well, of course not. How could I eat such a little cutie like you? Your looks would be going completely to waste. Not to mention, you wouldn't exactly be filling. I have a much better fate in mind for you. You're going to be one of my darling little brides. I have all sorts of human spouses, both male and female. But I call them all brides. It's more fitting, I think. You can say what you like about whether it's demeaning, but frankly, it's being rather generous. In a real marriage, we'd be equal partners, but I don't think of you as an equal. You're more like something halfway between a pet and a slave. Oh, sure. You'll have plenty of chores to take care of. I have an awfully big house, and it takes a lot of you tiny little things to keep it clean. And I'll probably play with you, tease you. Basically, I'll do whatever I want with you. <laughs> oh, I agree. It's definitely not fair, but fair or not, it's the way things are going to be. Hmm. Well, if you're so stuck on the idea of fairness, then maybe I can do something for you. I'll put your fate in your hands. I'll let you go. And all you have to do is leave if you don't want to be my bride. If you stay in the area, I'll assume that, despite what you say, you actually want to come with me. All right, let me just do one thing first. Okay, now I'll just go ahead and cut these ropes. See? You're free. Just go right ahead and 
Do whatever you like. Oh, how funny. For a second, I thought you were running away from me, but you came right back. Maybe you want to come with me after all. And here you are again. Hmm. Well, if you can't bear to be apart from me, then I'll just have to bring you home. <laughs> oh, don't worry. I'm just having a bit of fun with you. One of my more potent spells allows me to bend space in a small area. No matter what direction you go, you'll just end up right back here. I already told you I don't care about fairness, didn't I? You're not going to be able to change my mind about this. At least, I very much doubt it. Tell me, do you actually have anything to bargain with? Can you offer me anything in exchange for your freedom? Something equal to a lifetime of servitude? Hmm, I didn't think so. Honestly. I have no idea what gave you the idea that I'm the sort of being to grant a person's heartfelt request, just out of the goodness of my heart. I'm greedy, pernicious, and I don't even see humans as equals in the first place. Aww, oh, there's that adorable, teary face again. It's hard for me to tease you when you just look so cute. All right, all right. Listen, probably not going to be nearly as bad as you think. I like to tease, but I'm not cruel. At least, I wouldn't call myself cruel. I'm not going to hurt you or anything, okay? I mean... Is this really so bad? Sure, you're going to have to work for me for the rest of your life, but you just have to work for someone else if you stay, right? And there are some perks to being my bride. Well, for one, you wouldn't have to worry about food. Your people might be in the middle of a famine, but I'm doing just fine. My magic keeps the crowns near my home fertile, so my brides are able to harvest plenty of food for all of us. And you have other concerns too, don't you? Bandits, natural disasters, poverty. There's a lot for you humans to worry about, but not me. My brides and I live comfortable lives, and you get to be a part of that. I don't think this counts as a true sacrifice, if I'm being honest. Well, think what you will, but you don't really have a say in it anyway, so your opinion doesn't particularly matter. <laughs> I think I'm going to enjoy you. At the moment, you don't strike me as someone who is terribly submissive, but you do fear me. I can work with that. You're fun to tease, if nothing else. And I'm sure that eventually I can bring out a loyal, subservient side to you that you didn't know existed. And thus far, I've Never fail to mold a sacrifice into a perfect bride. See now, the crying just wants me to keep you more. <laughs> Honestly, you might be the cutest bride I've had in quite a while. I'm going to have a lot of fun making you serve me. Now come on. Let's get going.
There's a lot of things to show you once we get home. Boop. I've got a new bride and I'm taking them home. I've got a new bride to train. I've got a new bride to train for the farms. Let's train you, my bride, and teach you how to cook. Because everyone needs to know how to cook. If you don't know how to cook, then I highly suggest learning at least the basics. Because it's just a basic survival skill in this world. <laughs>